Good morning, everybody. It's Ian the Storyteller here, and I'm coming to you this morning from Eureka at home, and I hope that you're all very well. It's very early. It's, in fact, it's, uh, I think it's half past five in the morning, and, uh, and I'm up already. And the reason I'm up is because uh, I couldn't sleep last night. In fact, quite often I can't sleep, and the reason I can't sleep is because stories, they get inside my head, and uh, they work themselves around, and they don't let me sleep, you see. The pictures inside the stories, uh, they have to embed themselves inside my head until I learn them, and when I've learned them, I've just got to tell them to people. And I thought uh, at this early hour, I would pop myself up into one of my favourite places here amongst the trees, and I would tell you a little story, if that's all right. So, it didn't matter really what time you're listening to this story, whether it's in the morning, like it is right now, or in the afternoon, and you're having your lunch, or maybe it's the evening and you've got your hot chocolate and you're sat on the sofa. I hope you enjoy this story. Now, this story is an old story. It's a story that I've known for quite a long time. And it's an old English story fairy story. Now fairy stories, they get a bit confused you see, a lot of people use the term fairy story to describe all manner of stories, but a fairy story to me has to have a fairy in it uh, and this is my favourite fairy story and I hope you enjoy it. And the story goes like this Once upon a time a long time ago there was an old old lady. Now this old lady, she lived in a very unusual place. It might surprise you to know that she lived inside a vinegar bottle. Now I know what you're thinking. When I go to the chip shop, Ian, I go and have me salt and vinegar on me fish and chips and there's never been an old lady living inside that vinegar bottle, but I'm telling you, it's true. That's where she lived inside a vinegar bottle. Now, as you can probably imagine, it wasn't very nice. The vinegar bottle was small and it was smelly and she wasn't very happy. Well, one day, flying through the sky, there was a fairy. Now, you can imagine your fairy any way you like, but if I was a fairy, I would uh, be blonde with long hair, I would wear a pink tutu and I'd have little wings coming out from my shoulders so I could zoom here and there. Well, that's what this fairy looked like. And she, she saw uh, the old lady living inside the vinegar bottle and she was quite concerned. Well, you would be, wouldn't you, if you saw an old lady inside a vinegar bottle? And so she flew down and she put an ear up against the glass of the vinegar bottle and she listened. And as you can probably imagine, the old lady, she was moaning. Now I'm going to do me best old lady voice for you. I hope you like it. And if you do like it, you can join in yourself. The old lady, she said, Oh, it's a shame that an old lady like me should live inside this smelly vinegar bottle. It's far too small and cramped. I don't deserve such a fit. No, I deserve to live in a little cottage with white walls and a thatched roof and a wood-burning stove to keep me warm in the winter. Fine, said the fairy. Uh, you go to bed tonight, close your eyes, turn round three times and I'll see what I can do. So that's what the old lady did. She went to bed that night, she closed her eyes, she turned round three times, and in the morning, do you think she was in the cottage? Well, of course she was, because the fairy had weaved her magic, you see, and there was the, uh, the white walls, and there was the thatched roof, and there was the wood-burning stove, and for a while, the old lady, she wore a smile, but she forgot to do something very important. Now, you should always, when somebody's done something nice to you, say thank you. But the old lady didn't, you see. Well, the fairy went north, she went south, she went east, she went west, and after a whole year, she came back to check on the old lady. But when she got there, do you think she was happy? No, 
the old lady was moaning again. Oh, she said, an old lady doesn't deserve like this. I don't deserve to live inside a cottage. The walls are damp and the roof it leaks and I can't get the wood stove to light. I deserve to live in a townhouse. And my townhouse would have four floors and wooden stairs and stained glass windows and a beautiful oak door. And people outside would be crying cockles and mussels 24 hours a day. Fine, said the fairy. You go to bed tonight, close your eyes, turn round three times and I'll see what I can do. Well, the old lady went to bed. She closed her eyes. She turned round three times and in the morning, do you think she was in the townhouse? <gasps> of course she was, because the fairy had weaved her magic. Well, it had wooden stairs and a beautiful wooden door and stained glass windows and for a while the old lady wore a smile. But she forgot to do something important. You've guessed it. She forgot to say thank you. Well, the year went by and the ferry went north and south and east and west and after a whole year she came back to check on the old lady. And do you think she was happy? No, she was moaning again. Oh, she said, I don't deserve this. No old lady does to live in a townhouse like this. There are far too many stairs for my knees and I, I can't keep the stained glass windows clean and oh the door gets stuck in the winter time and if people don't stop crying cockles and mussels outside my door I shall go mad. I don't deserve the fate like this. I deserve <gasps> to live in a castle. And if I lived in a castle, I would be a queen. And I'd have a golden crown upon my head and a golden throne to sit in. And I'd have flags upon the spires and lots and lots of rooms. And oh, I'd have lots and lots of children to do all my dirty work, like clean my dirty socks and knickers by hand. I'm sure you'd like that job, wouldn't you? Fine, said the fairy. You go to bed tonight, you close your eyes, turn round three times and I shall see what I can do. Well, the old lady went to bed, she closed her eyes, she turned round three times, you've guessed it. And in the morning, do you think she was in the castle? <gasps> of course she was, because the fairy had weaved her magic. And, true to her word, there were more rooms than you could shake a stick at. There was a golden crown and a golden throne, and indeed she was queen. And there was a long line of children with pegs on their noses, ready to go to work. And for a while, the old lady, she wore a smile. But she forgot to do something important. You guessed it. She forgot to say thank you. And you should always say thank you when somebody does something nice for you. Well, a year went by. She went north, south east and west and then she came back and when she got there and she put it here against the castle door do you think the old lady was happy no the old lady was moaning again oh she said i don't deserve such a fate no old lady does to live in a castle like this there are far too many rooms and and the flags on the spires keep me awake at night and none of the children have turned up for work and there's a big pile of knickers in the corner gathering flies. Oh, I don't deserve this. I deserve to live on a cloud. And if I lived on a cloud, I would be like God. And if I was like God... I could strike down with thunder and lightning anybody who didn't do as they were told. Fine, said the fairy. You go to bed tonight, close your eyes and turn round three times and I shall see what I can do. Well, the old lady, she went to bed. She closed her eyes. She turned round three times and in the morning, do you think she was on the cloud? <gasps> no, she wasn't. So anybody who thinks she was, you got it wrong. Because that old lady, she wasn't on the clouds. She wasn't in the castle. She wasn't in the townhouse. She wasn't even in the cottage. 
You've guessed it. That old lady, she was back inside the vinegar bottle, which is exactly where that old lady deserved to be. And you know, all good stories have morals. Morals are like meaning. They're like truths. And the moral of this story is twofold. Firstly, try and be happy with what you've got. But more importantly than that, always, always, always say thank you when somebody does something nice for you. And I hope you think that my little story is something nice. And I hope you enjoy it. And because you can enjoy it any time of day. But, dear friends, that, as they say quite often, is the end of that. My name's Ian the Storyteller and I'm coming to you today from Eureka at home. And you know, I've got a feeling that it's not going to be too long before we're not at home. We're back at Eureka enjoying stories face to face with each other. Much love, much light and ta-ta for now. <laughs>